Hello, makers. It's Mars. Welcome to the Hey Brownberry podcast. I'm recording today from a different device than usual. I'm using my tablet, so I won't be splicing in a lot of edits to this podcast today, but I am so glad you've joined me because I just found myself really wanting to connect with you and to share with you. So I thought instead of making a big deal about tools and techniques, I'm just going to sit down and record. So here I am. This is primarily a knitting podcast, but I enjoy talking about all kinds of making and I'll be doing that today. So welcome. Welcome back or welcome for the first time. Thanks for coming to spend some time in my little corner of the internet. I'm here at home. Uh, You can see the background of my living room. I'm sitting in one of the Uh, better lit areas of my house in the hopes that that will help with some of the things I want to share with you. So I've piled a bunch of things around me and that's normally what I do. My version of what most people do for show notes is that I just pull out a bunch of things and I put them around me or on me and those are my visual cues for what I want to remember to tell you about. I would group today's show into a review of some finished objects and also a look into my works in progress pile. It's a pile. In fact, I just remembered something that I want to show you. And since this is unedited, I'm going to ask you to just hang on one second while I go get it. back. Thanks for that. All right, so as I said, today's going to be a bit of a review of things and there's no particular order. I would love feedback on anything you see here and I would encourage you to check out the description box below this video right here on YouTube because I will post pattern links, um, links to my project pages for anything that I've put on Ravelry, Um, and if I end up talking about other makers, which I often do, you can find information about them down below as well. Let's dive right in. As I said, this is primarily a knitting podcast, but I I have uh, projects and things today that kind of cover more than just knitting. I think yarn and fiber would be the theme. And I'm going to actually start with some finished objects. It's been a good couple of months for making. I've been fitting in more time to work on my projects. I will start with what I have on. This is something that I posted about a couple of months ago. It's my Georgetown sweater. This sweater is by Hannah Fettig and I'm wearing it today because it was a little chilly this morning and I'll take any excuse to wear my hand knits. This cardigan is one of those everyday wearables that a lot of us, I think, look for in our wardrobe. I made the sleeves a bit longer than called for in the pattern. And I think if you've been here before, you've seen some of these features. I did a split sleeve so that I could fold the sleeves back Just have some pretty little cuffs, a big wide collar, a nice long back. And I did this sweater um, seamed and in pieces, so I really like the structure of the shoulders and other elements like the short rows in the back to raise it a bit higher. Just there's so many great features of this pattern. I highly recommend it. I have knit a good number of sweaters, I think three at this point or four in the last year or so. And with each pattern, I learn a lot. So I'm very, very pleased to have this in my wardrobe. It's a little warm today, pardon me. (laughs) Anyway, I wanted to wear it because um, this is a finished object, obviously, but I'm about to knit another one. So I'm I'm gonna mix in a little bit of information here, but this finished object, 
is one that I wore out to breakfast one morning with some friends of mine. And one of my friends really just took to the style of the sweater and asked if I would make her one. And she's very knit worthy. So I said, yes. And what I did is this yarn that I bought suited the pattern so well is I went and ordered the same yarn in the color she wanted, which was this cream. It's a little blown out, there we go. So this yarn is its very bright. It's not white, it's actually a, a nice pale cream color. There we go. This is Cascade Yarns. It's a wool alpaca blend called Alpaca Lana Doro. Feels so good on, it has a really nice drape. And because it's only 50% alpaca, it doesn't shed as you're knitting it as much. Um, it actually is pretty easy to work with. Sometimes with alpaca yarns, there's a lot of fiber and fluff that kind of flies around as you're working with it, but not this. There's enough wool content that it's a pleasure to knit with. So I'll be making her a sweater like this in this cream yarn, and I'm actually really looking forward to it. There are options in the pattern to knit the sweater in the round or in pieces. I think I'm gonna try the in the round version this time, just because then I'll have experienced all portions of the pattern, which will be really cool. So um, that's a finished object and an almost work in progress, because I haven't cast on yet. But the beauty is, because I'm using the same yarn, I know exactly what needle size I'm gonna use, and I won't have to swatch. <laughs> um, so other things that I finished very recently, some smaller projects. Ooh, things are falling down around me. Some quick projects, some hats. I am part of a knit along called the Wooly Dozen. This is our third annual Wooly Dozen, which is a year long knit along where you knit 12 hats from patterns designed by Wooly Wormhead. Um, Wooly Wormhead is a, a hat designer. That is all she designs, and she's got over 200 patterns, and I am a huge fan of hers. So the Wooly Dozen is a knit-along that I moderate in her Ravelry group. You choose 12 hat patterns, and you can make more or less, but the plan is to knit at a rate of about one hat per month for the year. And you can keep them for yourself or give them as gifts. Either way, you get to explore all of these different hat styles and constructions. Um, Wooly has a huge library of tutorials and she shares techniques for cast-ons and bind-offs um, and different types of construction. She's really well known for her beautiful crown decreases and so on. So I've already knit three of her hats for the year. I'm pretty proud of that since it's only February. One of them I've given away, but the other two I have here with me so any of the projects that I show, you'll be able to see on my Instagram account where I am Hey Brownberry, and also on my Ravelry account. I try to be very good about keeping up with project pages. Sometimes I have to go back and remember my notes, but because I like good Ravelry project page notes, I try to do them as well. So this hat is called Coin, and you'll see the link for that down below. And it's knit in a yarn by Critium Handmaids, and I finished it while we were on vacation last week. So I may have shown this to you in my last, I think I did show it to you in my last episode. I'm just showing it again as one of my finished objects so far for the year, but you can check the last episode for details. When we came back from vacation, I was able to finish up this pattern by Wooly Wormhead, which is called Ziggy. It's a slouchy hat. My hair is not set up for hat wearing today, but I just want you to get the idea. It's a slouchy hat pattern in a beautiful color, and it's got this lovely lace detail in it. I know it looks funny, you guys, but I don't mind. I just want you to see how beautiful the yarn is and how really cool this kind of arrow-shaped lace pattern is. I just don't feel like taking down my ponytail and going through all of that, but at least you get to see the stitch pattern spread out a bit. And again, this is a Critium Handmaid's yarn. It's called Moody Sky in a worsted weight. And this hat is actually knit back and forth. Wooly calls this a sideways hat because you knit from side to side with a provisional cast on, and then you graft it together. 
she tells you exactly how to do that. She's got on her website, woollywormhead.com, and within her patterns, tutorials for grafting different stitch types. I've done this technique with Wooly before, and I'll be honest, if you just follow her grafting directions, it's nearly impossible to find where your join is from the cast on to the cast off edge, which is awesome because then you can wear your hat any way you want. So I really enjoyed making this. I think this might be my join area here. I'm, I'm honestly not sure. I really enjoyed making this and I would definitely knit it again. And that makes um, two of the three Wooly Wormhead hats I finished for the year. I finished one other hat, which is the Ninja Chickens Hearth and Snow hat a gorgeous cabled pattern hat. You can do it with or without a pom-pom and in three sizes. There's a beautiful twisted rib brim, this, this just luscious chunky cable, and some slip stitch details. Highly recommend this hat pattern. I've made this twice already and I actually made a headband version so kind of was obsessive about this knit. So they're Details about that are also on my Ravelry project page, but it feels nice to have a little stack of finished objects already for the year. I hope to be able to keep up that momentum. So um, that's it for finished objects right now. Um, wait, actually, I have one more that is related to another making passion of mine. My daughter and I run a company called Dynamics Yarns. It's a hand dyeing uh, yarn company where we choose natural fibers and often natural dyes to create colorful combinations for yarn. And I recently over dyed some yarn to create a colorway that I call Marine Life. This is on our 100% merino fingering base. We call it our fine merino fingering base. And it is obviously a pretty uh, bright blue main color, but there are some variegated spots here of green, a little orange, a little yellow interspersed throughout. And so Marine Life was the name that came to me when this was out of the dye pots and dried. So our Etsy shop is Dynamic Yar Dynamics Yarns. That information is below. And I want to share that with you because it's something else that I recently finished. I get so much joy out of putting colors together and seeing how the yarn turns out and then seeing how it knits up. On that note, I have a half finished object using some of our other yarns in a colorway called Galaxy Unicorn. <laughs> So this is one sock in a pair that I'm making. This will be a gifted pair. So it's a shorty sock that's knit with a gray yarn from our Maker Muse series at Dynamics and a Galaxy Unicorn yarn, which is a mix of blues, purples, pinks, a little bit of cream. This stitch pattern here on the top of the sock is one that I came up with my intention is to write up the pattern for this. Um, it's fairly simple, and so in my mind I'm thinking, will anybody really want a pattern for this? But I would like to put together a well-written pattern um, like some of the ones that I've seen and share this with you all. So I may do that at some point this year. But for now, I've got this example, and I really like how the Galaxy Unicorn colorway has come out. Check out the Dynamics Yarns Etsy shop so you can see that yarn and some different yarns that I've paired it with. This sock needs a mate. You guys can see that the light is changing as the clouds go by and then the sun peeks back out. I hope that doesn't disturb you too much. Some other works in progress in yarny business. I'm really on a sweater kick, you guys. I can't get over the, the, the need. Is that the right word? The need to knit sweaters. It feels like the right word because after I finish those hats, and even though I have socks on the needles, I just felt a little restless lately about not having a sweater project going. 
a sweater is a big undertaking and I'm part of a couple of knit alongs that have helped to encourage um, my progress on sweaters. But once I had cast off my last one, which was the Fern and Feather by Jennifer Steingass, I really felt restless about not having another sweater waiting in the wings. I deliberated over some and I even cast one on and I frogged it recently because the yarn just wasn't right for the pattern. And after frogging it, all I could think about was diving into my stash and getting another swatch going. So I did. <laughs> for a good while now, I have been a fan of Elizabeth Doherty. She is the designer behind Blue Bee Studios. She's an amazing garment designer. She has several designs out there. She's very well known for her sweater construction. Um, another designer who really writes patterns with uh, the aim to teach you new skills. And I've had this sweater in my queue, which is called Brickyard. So I went old school and went back to one of these folders. Did you guys use these in school? It has like the pockets in it and you can hole punch your projects and put them in there. Sorry, it's getting super dark. Let me sit back a bit. But you can hole punch your pages. And I put my pattern in there so I could hold all the things that I need for my project. Right now it's got the pattern in it. I left space for notes. So here's Brickyard, a picture of what it looks like. It's an A-line sweater, long sleeve, um, kind of a, a wider neck, not quite a crew neck, with this beautiful braid detail across the top of the bust line. I had this sweater in my queue. I was looking through my stash yarn because I'm knitting from stash right now and I found the perfect match. It calls for a DK weight and I have this. Now the color is not going to be super accurate since I'm losing my light, but this is raspberry and it's a yarn that's dyed right here in Florida by my friend Lindsay of the Fiber Seed. There's her tag and logo. This is Sprout DK in Raspberry. And I swatched this with just plain stockinette and then the brickwork pattern. So this helped me to figure out that for both the stockinette section and the pattern section, I need to go down a needle size from what the pattern calls for. This is why we swatch people. Um, the, the sweater does suggest some positive ease, but I didn't want the size that I chose to be so big that it was hanging on me. And Elizabeth even says in the pattern, if you don't calculate your ease properly or really kind of focus on your gauge, the sweater and the way it's constructed can end up looking too big instead of just looking like it's intentionally a little loose. So I'm glad I swatched because that helped me to choose my needle size. I started last night, um, the pattern begins at the neckline, so I don't have too much progress, but I'm already working through some of the brickwork pattern. So you can see that uh, at the neckline. I like the rhythm of this pattern already. I think I'm really gonna enjoy it. And this yarn is so squishy soft and really easy to use. I've got it on my chow goos, looking around to see if my, yes, I have the chow goo, small set of chow goo spins. Comes in this beautiful case. So all the smaller sizes, and I'm using a US six, uh, which is a 4.0 um, millimeter, and a US four, which is a 3.5 millimeter, because the pattern calls for different needle sizes at different points. So far so good, working some short rows right now, so it does take some concentration. Short rows in this pattern are being used for some back and shoulder shaping. I'm back in a new location. <laughs> this is uh, my craft room and there was some light coming in this window and I thought maybe that'll be light enough, but I gotta tell you the clouds are just rolling across us here. So 
just going to keep going and hope that things show up well enough for you guys to be able to share them with me. So we talked a bit about um, my sweater project, so I will be working on that for the next little while. I travel for work, so I have some travel coming up, and I always like to have projects on the needles that keep me interested if I'm on a flight or spending time in my hotel room after meetings. It's so comforting to have a, a project on the go. <clears throat> Speaking of portable projects, I've actually done a lot more spinning lately. I started drop spindling last summer and have been practicing almost every day. I sometimes have to take a break because I'm still getting into the rhythm of it. And I actually was using techniques in the beginning that would hurt my shoulder because I just didn't take enough breaks. So, I'm learning that even though I want to do it for a few minutes every day, I have to take my time. So this spin is um, its just a single right now on my shocked drop spindle. And it is a combination Merino BFL fiber. Here's the fiber that came in a bat, it was gifted to me. It's got all different kinds of blues in it, which you guys may have seen in my last episode. And I decided to actually start separating out pieces of the bat and laying them out in strips of color on purpose, just so that I didn't end up with, for example, one whole area of the dark blue. Now, I'm new. I don't know a lot about prep and other things. I know a little bit about pre-drafting. I've seen some podcast episodes that talk about how to intentionally create certain color sequences I'm not getting that specific yet and I'm fine with a little bit of randomness so the way I've laid these out is really just with the intention of mixing in some of the different types of blue so that I get a nice variety within the spin and of course um, when I apply this I intend to two ply it because that's the method I'm <laughs> most comfortable with so far I have not tried any other when I two ply it, I'm going to get even an additional mix as each strand, each single strand um, plies on the other. But I'm loving it so far. I'm pretty happy with the evenness of this single. It's not perfect. I've got thick and thin spots still, but I'm actually feeling more relaxed when I spin. And I find myself, you know, thinking about it during the day, like, oh, I should spin for a few minutes. So. That's how I intend to get through uh, this particular uh, bit of fiber. And as all experienced spinners have told me, I will then be thinking about what project to make with my hand spun because you should work with your hand spun and not just sit and admire it and pet it, even though that's what you want to do. <laughs> so um, that's a work in progress as well. And I'm going to keep going on that. Some of you may be doing the spin 15 a day which is sort of, um, I would say, a global make-along to spin 15 minutes a day because that really helps you work through your fiber stash. So I'm trying to do that as well. One of the whips I haven't shown in a long time is a larger one. And it's an ongoing project. I don't have a deadline for this, really. It's my Crochet Granny Stripes Blanket. And here's my progress on it to this point. Lots of beautiful yarns in here. So this project is made up of worsted weight and DK weight yarns. And they're all non-superwash. So mostly wools, a couple of wool blends uh, that were in my stash. A couple of them are actually from last year's Edinburgh Yarn Festival that Shamika brought back for me from Scotland. And I will be going to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year. Will I see you there? I hope to get some more yarns that I can add to this blanket. It's such a great keepsake. And because it is on a larger hook, um, it's moving along really quickly. I'm using a size five hook from Bee Queen collection, and I enjoy working on this project. It works up really quickly, so you feel like once you've built a few rows, you've really accomplished something in the course of an evening or watching a movie. 
and I'm having a really good time with it. It's heavy, of course. That's the intention. It won't be as big as the last one I made out of fingering weight because it won't need to be. We intend as a family to go camping this summer in North Carolina, and I happen to know from experience that it gets pretty cold at nights. Sitting around the campfire, it will be very nice to have a blanket to throw over us. So I intend to finish it by then. Um, probably go about double this size at least, maybe a little more. So that's something that's an ongoing work in progress. Do you have any blanket projects on the go? Um, I really don't give myself any pressure about this one. And the last one that I made out of fingering weight took me almost exactly a year. And I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> so I just continue to add yarns to it by weight. Really loving that. Um, I have a couple sock projects on the go. So again, all of these things can be found on my Ravelry page. You'll see I have my works in progress have now gone into a second row on Ravelry. Sometimes that gives me a little, a little agita to see two rows of whips, but right now I'm okay with it. <laughs> I'm knitting from stash. I'm working on projects that I love. Um, I have goals for all of them, but they're not heavy time-based goals. So I'm enjoying them. This sock project that I have on the needles is from our Dynamics Yarns sock blank with a colorway called Ghost in the Machine. And someone said it looks kind of like the code in the matrix. So this I showed on the last podcast was just um, at the heel turn when I was away on vacation. So I got a little bit further, got past the heel. I'm doing a Sorry, needles are in the way. I'm doing um, heel flap and gusset. It's kind of a traditional heel, slip stitch heel uh, with a gusset construction. So yeah, I made a little more progress. I actually had to frog and restart this because somehow I had way too many stitches on the gusset. I think I increased on the gusset and just kept increasing without paying attention. So there's a high likelihood that <laughs> The heel of this sock will not look exactly like its partner. That's fine. Um, I have intentions for these and the person who will get them, as long as they both fit fine, that person won't mind at all. And I've tried them on. I have a similar foot size and they fit really well around the foot. So I'm happy about that. Love knitting from sock blanks. I've told you guys this before. Find it a really easy way to bring a project around with me. So I'm enjoying that. Um, keeping everything in my Brie bag. So same as last time, um, you saw that work in progress. Only a little bit more has been done. When I was on vacation last week, the socks were my primary project. So I made a, I made a decision to make a little bit of progress on each instead of just going all the way through and finishing one. Tell me how you guys feel about that. If you have multiple projects going like multiple pairs of socks, for example, are you more likely to get kind of monogamous by working mostly on one and making a lot of progress on one? Or do you tend to uh, take little bites out of each one and make progress on all at one time? I'm interested. I've been doing the second method. So the other set of socks that I had shown you, I was just starting and I call these my stripy socks. Um, my spirited stripy socks because they've got some great bright colors in them from minis that I got from the sexy knitter. And I think the last time I showed them to you, I was just starting in the foot area to add some stripes. And now I've gotten past the heel turn and the heel flap and into the leg and I'm actually starting the cuff. So as you can see, this regia yarn in a blue tweed is what I'm using for the toe, heel, and contrast cuff. And that just kind of pulls the whole thing together because otherwise the, the minis, they have coordinating colors, but they're it's meant to be a little bit random, a little free spirited and fun. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying that. And this one is nearly done. I have maybe an inch to an inch and a half to go on the cuff. This is a bit longer. Um, sock, not like the shorties that I did earlier. So I used these socks 
as a way to keep myself interested in the projects, I used different methods on each of the sock. Um, a short row heel versus a heel flap and gusset, a shorty sock versus one that's, you know, going up the leg a bit more, a little bit longer, um, knitting from minis and striping versus using the sock blank. This past vacation, I found that picking my projects by uh, different techniques really helped me. So I highly recommend that if you're packing for travel, think about giving your brain a little bit of playtime. Maybe it's as simple as bringing projects that have two different needle sizes. And that way, you know, you can go from a, a fine gauge project like a sock to maybe a larger gauge project like a sweater. Um, maybe it's the same type of project like this, where it's still a sock and it's still pretty easy to knit, but you use a different toe or heel construction, um, or you make a pattern sock and a vanilla one. That's really helped me this past trip to stay interested in the projects that I brought and really looked forward to working on each one. So that worked out really well. Friends, I have one more thing to show you. It is, surprise, surprise, my next hat project, because apparently I'm obsessed with hats, socks, and sweaters. <laughs> I think I always have been. I go through phases where those types of projects can take over my knitting life, but right now they're, they're all being given an equal share, which is a lot of fun for me. So as I mentioned before, Wooly Wormhead designs hats in what she calls a sideways technique. So you're actually knitting back and forth and creating the segments of a hat. So if I show you this wedge, you might say, how on earth is that gonna turn into a hat? What I have here is two and a half wedges in different colored yarns on a hat that will eventually be knit all the way around and joined, cast on to cast off edge. You have to use your imagination a little bit. <laughs> but the construction uses short rows to create the height of the hat. So the brim, the body, and the crown. And as you go around making those wedges with short rows, eventually they'll join together and make that circular shape that we're all familiar with. What I decided to do with this particular project is, as you can see, if I hide my ends a bit more, you can see it better. There are three different yarns being used here. This first one you'll recognize from my coin hat. This second one is a Dynamics yarn that my daughter and I dyed quite some time ago called Gamora. And this third one is my hand spun. So when I saw these three yarns next to each other, because of the similarities in color and because of you know where they came from, a yarn dyer that I love, a yarn that I dyed, and a yarn that I spun, I really was motivated to use them all together, trying to keep them in control here. So I saw them, um, you know, in different stages. For example, I had just finished knitting a hat with this one. Um, this was sitting on my shelf as some hand spun I knew I wanted to use. And this has been in my stash just as a little sampling of that particular colorway. And I thought these will go great together and I would kind of want them to be stripey, but not necessarily horizontal stripes. Wooly worm head to the rescue. I'm able to use all three of the yarns in different proportions and they'll be striping going around the hat and they'll look like vertical stripes. So far it's working out exactly the way I wanted. I'm able to, I kind of weighed each one of them. So I'm able to tell how much of each color a wedge takes so I know I knew the right size that I wanted based on the amount of yardage I would use and that made it really easy for me to cast on and start. These hats work up so quickly because you're going back and forth on a small number of stitches and even though it involves short rows and I'm using the German short row technique you may be familiar with that even though it involves short rows I find it so meditative so repetitive in a good way. I I feel a small sense of accomplishment when I finish each wedge and I get to switch colors. I don't even mind. I actually started weaving in the ends already for the different um, the different yarns. 
just so that I won't have a lot of that to do at the end. So that is my final whip that I wanted to share with you. I'm so glad I had a chance to connect with you. I really do enjoy being able to catalog my projects in this way. And through your comments, I can feel that encouragement. And I want to encourage you right back. Whatever you're working on, I hope that it's going according to plan. I hope that you are finding joy in the actual making. I think sometimes we may let deadlines or even mistakes that we have to fix uh, get in the way of just the pleasure of making. And I'm trying to remind myself not to let that part go. <laughs> so mixing things up, using my hand spun, having different projects on the go is helping me to keep the joy in this making journey. So I wish that same joy for you. Thank you so much for coming to join me on my podcast. I really, really love having this connection with you. And I appreciate your time spent with me. So come back and see me again another time. Hit like on this video. It will help others to find me. And subscribe if you want to know when I've posted a new episode. Have a great week. Bye for now.